This is a custom painted fuel tank from a Harley Davidson and somewhere in this general area here is a fuel leak. Now this is exactly how I received this tank with the paint removed and the part repair involves preserving the paint and graphics in the undamaged areas as in I gotta be careful not to scratch the crap out of this thing as I work with it. Now fuel leaks are something that I deal with often and they are a fantastic source of revenue for you if you can fix them as well. So this video is all about how to safely repair a fuel tank in the event that you receive one similar to how I received this repair. It was actually pretty tough considering there were a few snags and instances that added up to more than originally estimated. So first things first, never trust anyone who says they flushed the tank before you got it. Now obviously fuel tanks store fuel, and if you're going to be heating up that metal to stick it back together, the contents of said fuel tank will go boom if they're left inside. So no matter what, you need to degas and defume the tank before you make the repairs. Do not weld on a tank that has not been completely degassed or defumed. I know this sounds like an obvious caution, but you know, with some people you just gotta put it out there. Of course, I'll show you how I degas and defume the tank in a couple minutes, but before I tear the tank apart, I gotta find the leak. Now this little rubber plug here is going to help us with that. With a little bit, and I do mean a little bit of pressure on the inside along with some soapy water on the outside, the leak will show its general location pretty quickly. Now on this, I used some foamy car wash solution because it was right next to me and it makes some serious bubbles. With the leak spotted, we can shift our efforts over to making the tank safe to weld. First, I'll pull the fuel valve out. Now, of course, I know what the valve is actually called, but YouTube doesn't really like the word c and it's pretty annoying to hear beeps every time I say pet c when I'm talking about the fuel valve. So for all intents and purposes in this video, we're just going to call it a fuel valve from now on. Next, I'm going to grab my steam machine. I usually use this to detail cars in my spare time, but it's really good at pulling fumes out of a tank in just a few minutes. How does it work, you might ask? Well, very simple science. The steam is water vapor and water and gas don't mix. The hot water vapor fills up the tank which releases fuel molecules causing them to sit on top of the water as the steam condenses which drains out of the bottom of the fuel valve port. A similar effect is achieved when you use the popular internet method of hooking up your car's exhaust to it. The hot exhaust creates steam which does the exact same thing. However, it's kind of silly to expect an engine to breathe through a 3 quarter or 19 millimeter hole like the one for the fuel valve. On large tanks, sure, maybe. You can also purge the tank with argon, but it's best to completely degas and defume it to the point where it simply doesn't light on fire anymore. Now, I have a link to the steamer in the description, and it's a really handy tool to have in the shop either way, so consider it. Okay, so the leak is actually down in here, and... You can see that there's accumulation of dirt and grit and it's kind of slimy and smells kind of like fuel when you sniff it. So that would indicate that there's actually a leak somewhere in behind this bracket here. Now, it's not a definite or guarantee or anything else like that, but I don't want to fix this. Have this gorgeous tank repainted, repaired, whatever the case is, only to find out that there's still a leak somewhere in this cracked weld or behind here. So the solution here is to completely weld out this bracket all the way around which of course they're gonna have to repair this side of the tank and everything else like that but um i'm also i already contacted the uh, uh the customer in this case and i told him i said i can't guarantee this weld because i'm gonna have to weld the entire thing out and you just don't know in a case like that the other issue we have here is that uh, all the paint and everything is sprayed up inside of there so when that happens i mean there's nothing that's really going to clean that out so the TIG is kind of out of the question in this case, so I'm going to have to MIG blast this thing all the way around just to make sure that everything blends and seals up and whatnot. So I would rather advise them on, uh, you know, get a new tank and repaint the whole thing, but they're just going to go ahead with this and uh, whatnot. It's going to have to be relined and everything else like that, or resealed, and hopefully with all of that combined, it'll fix it, and of course, it'll keep the, the labor down to repair all of this section and repaint it and everything else like that. So let's see how far we get into this. Anytime you make a weld repair, you should bring the metal to a clean and brightened condition. You just flat out shouldn't be welding through dirty metal. Now there are many ways to achieve this result from chemical solutions to abrasives and wire wheels. But usually I don't use these methods in tight spaces like this because chemical solutions, for instance, are hard to flush out and are often vapor harmful. I'm just not interested in breathing all that junk in or having it mess with my weld later. 
Now, wire wheels are good, but they can't get into the tight spaces unless you have a wide assortment of sizes and shapes. Now, these methods are time consuming and they add to the expense. So I use a much faster trick, which involves burning the paint off with a torch and scraping the excess off of the wire brush. With just enough heat, you can get the paint and primer coats to lift, exposing the bright metal underneath. Once the chips and flakes are gone, a quick flush with acetone will clean out all the crevices. Now, I have received some criticism in the past about this method regarding burning up the surrounding paint, but think about it for a second. If the flame torch doesn't burn it all off, then the weld definitely will when you go to weld it. So either way, use whatever method works best for you. At the end of the day, there's technically no right or wrong as long as the result is correct. Now, as mentioned earlier in this video, part of this repair involves not messing up the existing graphics and paintwork that's already on the tank that is not going to have to get refinished or repaired. So I put my welding jacket down over the table to make sure that the tank doesn't get scratched. Now, MIG welding is useful in this case because it has the ability to get hot quickly while simultaneously depositing a lot of metal. Areas of the bracket have gaps, which are filled a lot easier and faster than with TIG. The trade-off in this case is that it can look a little bit messier. Now I have the machine set to 17.7 volts at 202 inches per minute with O35 wire and C25 gas. This is strong enough to penetrate into the thicker metal bracket, but not too powerful to easily blow holes in the thin tank. However, settings alone are never the only part of the equation. My technique has to be on point, and this involves me focusing the bead more toward the thicker bracket while letting the pool wash into the crevices. Some instances involve taking large steps in a whipping motion to control the heat, while other times I relied on a heavy stitch method on some of the sensitive spots. I also did my best to work in opposing sections of the tank, which allowed the previously welded section to cool down. But even after all of these cautions and techniques, you still might end up with a blowout. In this case, it's right where the original leak was located. Hey, you can see some of the hole right there. Just blew right through it. So what I'm gonna have to do is stitch that right up. No fun. So in order to fill this up, we're gonna do short blasts, just quick trigger pulls, right? We call this stitching. Now the heat needs to be concentrated on this piece, or at least your wire needs to be concentrated on this piece here because it has more surface area, it's thicker, right? Obviously the reason that this blew through is because it's so paper thin. So if we build the weld pool up or the bead up, more concentrated on this side, gravity will want to kind of take it and just let it flow into that area and it should stick beautifully, right? We don't, we don't want to concentrate any of our pool or our wire on this paper thin stuff. We're just going to want to fill it in there. Just like that. Now what I'm doing here is I'm watching that weld pool or that bead just bleed over, right? It's gonna expand, it's gonna grow, and as soon as it just kisses or just touches right here, that's when I'm out. Just let it solidify for a moment and then you're good. Of course, as mentioned before, the MIG is not going to produce welds like a TIG, and in situations like this, with tight spots that are difficult to clean, you really shouldn't expect beautiful stacks and dimes. The weld will likely be covered in filler when it gets finished, but you should still do your best to make it as presentable as possible. And at the end of the day, all we really care about is that it doesn't leak anymore. So with it all welded up and cleaned, I hit it with a generous amount of soapy water solution and air a few times to ensure the leak no longer existed. Now this repair did set me back on time a little bit because the leak was larger than anticipated. I initially estimated one hour for the repair, but the extra steps added up to an additional 38 minutes. Now this excludes the time I spent demonstrating things to the camera, like lighting the tank on fire or using the prep solutions. I didn't charge the customer for that. The total is 1.6 hours for the job, which is 160 bucks. Obviously paint and a fresh seal and everything else like that will be additional. And that's all I got for this episode. I want to thank you guys for watching as always, and I'll catch up with you guys in the next round.